Okay, uh, let's jump right into it. I'm making this video because I said I would make it uh, and a few people messaged me about it. So let's just get this over with and uh, move on to more uh, fascinating things. How do you create a collision for a shader generated uh, terrain in Godot? Well, let me show you how to do it. Again, as with nearly everything else in Godot, there are multiple ways to bake a collider for height map terrain. You can also use the mesh tools and so on. But this one seems the easiest and indeed the fastest. And probably the intended way too, considering the name of the resource that we're going to be using. Okay, firstly, in the collision shape node, you have this property here called shape, which I'm sure you're well aware of. What you may have missed about it though, is that on the list of shapes here, you have this thing called height map shape 3D. Uh, so if we go ahead and select it and set the width and depth to let's say a thousand by a thousand You'll see it creates a collision mesh, which is nothing else but an array of height values So if you click on this array, you'll see that we have all of our uh, height values here on this list There's one for each vertex on this collision mesh that we've just created So if we put a value in the first one, let's say 50 you'll see that in the corner over there, there is a spike. Well, that is exactly the first vertex reaching the height of 50. That's what's going on. So if I put a value into the second one and the third one and so on, you'll see how it's starting to build a terrain shape. Now, this means that if we can somehow populate this map data array with height map values from a height map image, uh, we will be able to build the collision shape that will exactly match the terrain shape, which is what we're here to do. And we can do it with just a few lines of code. So let me show you. Uh, this is the script. And then before we go into it, let me just explain uh, the setup real quick. You can have a much simpler setup if you want, but I've decided to uh, keep my collision nodes under this parent node called Terrain Collisions because I'm spawning and despawning collision chunks as the player moves around the map. And the reason I have it set up like this is well, if you recall in from my previous videos, my terrain is infinite. So I need a way to dynamically uh, create collisions for the terrain chunk that I am currently on and discard all the other ones. So my collision script, which creates and manages collision chunks, is attached to this parent node right here. So let's look at what we have in the script. If we want to generate a collision shape from the height map, we must first deliver the height map into it, right? So I'm getting mine from the shader param. See, my terrain node, which I creatively named plane2, has the vertex shader on it, which stores the link to the height map image. So I'm just gonna grab it off of there. It's just more convenient for me to do it in this way. Once we know where the height map image is, we can now go about creating the collision shape from it. I built this create collision function for it. And in it, we first set the scale of the collision node to match the scale of my terrain. Collision decimation is totally optional. It, it's a means to uh, generate less detailed colliders, basically. For example, when your height map image is 4K, uh, but it's not very rough, you may want uh, to have a collision mesh that is 2K or even 1K, and that should be good enough. You may not need all this detail in the collision mesh. In which case you would decimate uh, the collision mesh while generating it. I'll explain how it works in just a moment. Okay, next we need to get the actual height map image. Uh, for this to work, you need to make sure that you import the height map image as an image, not as a texture. We also need to know uh, what the height of the terrain is. Uh, this is the exact same value that you used in your vertex shader to create the terrain displacement in the first place. Uh, I could just put the number here, but again, I want to automate it. So I'll just grab the height uh, uh, value from the terrain shader parameter. And then uh, this is the decimation trick here, okay? I take the height map image and resize it to the height and width divided by the uh, decimation value. So if the decimation value is 2, which it is in my case, uh, we're going to resize the image by half. And, and that is going to produce a collision shape that is uh, you know, half as detailed as the uh, terrain. This is good enough in my case. 
The reason there's a, a, a plus one on the width and height is that uh, if you don't add one more pixel, there will be a gap between two neighboring collision chunks. The reason for that is uh, that in order to build one quad uh, of the collision shape, you need four vertices. So let's say your height map image is three by three pixels. So it looks something like this. You would uh, expect your collision shape to also be three by three, right? But in here, uh, if you put map width and depth to three, so three by three, you get this. It's two quads by two quads, right? It's one short. Is this wrong? No, because vertex wise, it is three by three, isn't it? But since this collision shape is generated on the basis of an image, we want each pixel of the image to build a quad. Otherwise we can't really control uh, the shape. And that's why you need to add this extra row of pixels on each axis because that will give you uh, the extra row of vertices and will patch this gap. Okay, long story, but hopefully it makes sense. Um, next, we need to create a new height map shape 3D resource and uh, we're going to assign it to the shape property of our collision shape node. Set the width and depth using the resized image. And then what's left is to generate the float array of height values to populate this map data property. And to do this, we'll loop through the X and Y of the height map image and get all the pixels uh, of the image. And each pixel's color channel, we're going to multiply by the terrain height value before pushing it into the array. I'm using the red channel here, as you can see, the R, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, it's a grayscale uh, image. So all three channels, R, B, and G, will have the same value anyway and um, and that's it then we just feed th uh, the float array into the map data parameter on the shape property and we have our collision the rest of the script is totally out of scope for this episode but it's basically a rough and ready way to move the collision shape around the world so that it's always under my feet so just quickly uh, the way i set this up is i have this function here that creates anchor points around the starting position of the collision node of the first collision node it has a radius setting i have it hard set to 10 you can set it to whatever you want meaning that it will spawn five 3d nodes in both directions on the x axis and then for each anchor point it will create more anchor points in each direction from that anchor point on the y-axis so effectively this function creates a grid of anchor points around my starting position and these anchor points are used by the collision chunk to attach itself to so when i get close to an anchor point the script will get a copy of the active collision chunk and attach that copy to the anchor point that i'm approaching and after I step onto this new chunk uh, and move away from the previous chunk, the previous chunk gets discarded. That's just how I did it. You can do it in your own way, whatever works for you. Well, I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for the next episode in which I'll explain how I got this infinite grass thing going on using particle shaders in Godot 4. And it's gonna be a much nicer video. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. Uh, consider subscribing for more content. If you want more frequent updates, follow me on Twitter. And now I guess I'll leave you with a few of the uh, recent clips I captured of my project when I was testing the grass and other things. Thanks for watching. Uh, till next time. Peace.